Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> so this is kind of our, this is a, a master class. It's a really great opportunity, I, th I think, um, uh, to, to have an, an American actress come to, uh, uh, come to this campus to, to talk a little bit about her career and about, uh, about uh, movie making generally. And, and um, so I, I think that it's, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Amy Hill. Who, um, who many of you know from a number of series and a number of movies, and uh, she's currently uh, going to be in um, a, uh, a series called uh, um, Magnum PI, which is which is uh, shooting here in Hawaii, and so that's why one of the reasons why she's here. So, Amy Hill. Hi. And it's going in the right direction. <laughs> My daughter was in a hula halal, so she's very hard on me. So, uh, you know, I've known uh, Gary for a long time, almost thirty years, because yeah. you were like one of the first directors I ever worked with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny to come around. So we did we, we we did a show years ago. Um, well, we, we, you, you could talk a little bit about it, but it was a Margaret Cho show, and it's when Margaret just became a star, and uh, and and so you know, she, uh, Amy played the role of a grandmother, and and you know, I think that the the writers basically wrote wrote it for Amy. Well, not initially. <laughs> <laughs> but once they got you, they did. <laughs> once they got me. You know what was great? Because I came from a, a theater background in San Francisco. I was with the Asian American Theater Company, and I was able to uh, do sketch comedy there, too. I was able to develop characters, and that's oh. how grandma, the character grandma, sort of developed in San Francisco mm -hmm. years before. I was, but in theater, I was always playing character uh, parts older, my age, and also older. So I was <laughs> used to playing all kinds of things. And I'd played Filipino, Chinese, uh, Japanese, which is what I am, half Japanese. And my mom is from Japan. So I did a lot of camp plays. Um, but when I did that character, I went in with a gray wig to the audition. Number. Uh, yeah, and I remember Keone was there at the network audition, and he said, why are you wearing that thing on your head? <laughs> and I thought, oh, so supportive. I love you. <laughs> he was auditioning to be my son, and <laughs> God, he didn't get it. Uh, Clyde Kusatsu got it, who happens to be in town uh, for a couple of days right now. Oh, he is? Do a, yeah, oh he's doing an Iolani um, 66th anniversary reunion. So, in the grand tradition, I was playing the mother of someone who was older than me. <laughs> anyway, All American Girl, I, uh, I got it, but I was sort of on probation for the pilot because they thought I was too young mm -hmm. to play the part. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and it was very stressful, but then I, and there was a, so I sort of turned it around and thought, well, you know, I'll just do what I want. I'll, you know, I'll play the character the way I want to play it. And I either get it or I don't. But at least I can walk away going, I did what I want to do. And um, I got it. And it was really great for the rest of that season to be able to just be grandma the way I wanted to be. It was like a real person because it was sort of based on my mother, although I gave her a little kimchi twist. <laughs> and, um, and I had, you know, people uh, in my community that I used to uh, give me a sense of authenticity too, because I wanted to make sure that she was Korean, mm -hmm. an immigrant Korean that was real. Did you find that um, um, that not having Asian American act, uh, writers on the show yeah. was difficult? It was. It was really difficult, and you know the producers were also none of them. None of them were Asian Americans. No. So the first, uh, the pilot actually, we had. Uh, a bunch of Chinese stuff. We had Uncle Ben's converted rice. We were <laughs> had like the strangest food, and we were all going, "What? The, uh, this is. I'm not gonna. 
when I, uh, <laughs> it, it, that, it should not come so easily off the spoon. <laughs> it needs to be sticky. So, um, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff in that pilot and we were able to fix some things, but it was difficult. And, you know, in any show that you're doing, especially if it's, um, I think, ethnic specific, yeah. you would love to have people, but they would always say there weren't writers, there weren't directors, there weren't producers who had any experience to be able to populate the show yeah. uh, behind the scenes. We had a consultant on that show. I mean, uh, I think she was Asian American. She was, I think, Korean. She was Korean, I think, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but, but I don't think she had a lot to say or do. She didn't. I feel like she had ulterior motives of doing something else. She was a friend of some, I don't know. I yeah, didn't, yeah. I didn't, she wasn't on our side. <laughs> no, no, no. She really wasn't. We'd go to her and she'd be like, you know, step away. You know, I, I, <laughs> I tell, I, I tell uh, our students here on campus all the time that, that this is an opportunity, today is an opportunity for more Asian, uh, Asian American writers to write mm -hmm. um, because um, the the community, the overall, the American community really needs to hear those voices and I don't think we hear enough of it. And so, you know, when, when you see a movie like Crazy Regations, which is written by uh, uh, an Asian American, it's pretty, pretty spectacular, really. Yeah. Oh, things have changed in the last 20 years Tremendously. Tremendously. Yeah. I still do a lot of theater, and I know a lot of uh, Asian American playwrights. They're blowing up yep. Asian American playwrights. And they are now uh, populating series like The Affair, or I don't even know. There's so many shows on TV. They're not going just to Asian American shows, being mm -hmm. that Asian American writer. No. They're in regular mainstream shows, mm -hmm. adding their influence to the show and then you know are able to then build that resume to be able to go and uh, maybe get a pilot green lighted that has some Asian American content I mean as an Asian American actor I'm happy happy I'm working a lot of Asian Americans are working now but what you want is your story to be told you don't want always to have you know a like the, because we were always being referred to as the Asian American Bill Cosby show. And it's like, well, <laughs> so they were trying to replicate that yeah. formula. And, you know, it, it, it's not. Oh. No. No. It has to be based in some reality. And Margaret's actual family was crazy. And it would have been a great show. I mean, they went to church. I remember going up to San Francisco and hanging out with them. Margaret came down in satin hot pants to go to church. My mother would have been like, oh, you turn around. You're not going to church with those clothes. And her mother was like, ah, Margaret. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> but you know, her parents owned a porno store in San Francisco. A gay, a, and it had gay, gay books and stuff. And I mean, that story would have been fabulous. The reality of their lives. Her dad was, you know, a writer. It, so, you know, in our show, the dad owned a bookstore, but it was like Barnes & Noble. <laughs> you, all these missed opportunities for real stories that the whole, I think the the, everybody would have watched and said, oh my God, that's my family. Yeah. Because everybody has crazy families. Yeah. 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 Just saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, not going to tell you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we, I, I have a lot of thoughts about that show. <laughs> I know. Me too. But Margaret went on to then, you know, take control of her own story and has. She did go on. One of the problems yeah. on that show was that they never really got a hold of who she was. Mm -mm. And, and, and so consequently, uh, as a result of that, it never took off because I think what was special about Margaret was she was, she, she was one of a kind performer and, and she had a personality that was one of a kind. And, and, and I, I don't think that they, they were trying to morph her into you know, somebody else. Yeah, well, they were always worried that the you know middle America was not going to be able to find her palatable. Yeah, and that's and that's not true. I mean, you you know full well that with all the shows that we've we've had on the air, the middle America finds it. You know. No, look at um, 
the golden age. Well, there's so many golden ages, but Archie Bunker. Archie, Bun- Archie Bunker. Any of nobody those Norman Lee, sh- Lee shows. Nobody you just found that go, show palatable at yeah. the time when, when we first came out. That was a risk. And 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 uh, and yeah, and that show has become uh, an iconic show. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So I've been lucky. I've been lucky that I've been in. Uh, I've just had fun. <laughs> Being a character actor is the best. Um, yeah. Uh, but one of the things that I, ought, I also wanted to bring up, too, <laughs> these are my own little things, uh, is that during the course of my career, I've seen uh, many incarnations of what's politically correct and what's okay. Mm-hmm. For me, it's always been, as, as long as I'm being truthful and authentic with my characters or uh, with, because I write as well, and I used to do solo shows that were autobiographical. And it, you know, included uh, my mother (laughs) and other people in my life. Um, And I, you know, I never wrote to make sure that people were okay with what I wrote. I just wrote it and tried to be real. But during the course of time, I've had, especially Asian, like, I've had Asian American actors tell me that they never wanted to do characters with accents. They never wanted to play immigrants. And for me, that always felt like, well, am I going to erase my mother's existence in this world? She's an immigrant who had a big old accent. And so my feeling was always like, if the part um, requires an accent because, you know, the person is older and came over older and didn't learn English, my mom learned it on the fly, so her accent was very specific to having learned it as she went. Um, then I'm playing accents. I love, I love to do a character. Like on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, I'm Filipina. And, um, you know, they don't know what I am because my name's Amy Hill. It's a good thing I didn't change it. <laughs> I was gonna when I was doing Asian American Theater because I thought, oh God, I stick out like a sore thumb, that name, Amy Hill. <laughs> and they were all, <laughs> the people were like, no, that you were born with that name, you should just keep it. So I've been sort of unapologetic. I identify Asian American, but I'm not, uh, you know, ashamed of my white background either, which is Finnish, just as crazy as Japanese. But... Um, but I'm, you know, I love to investigate characters, and sometimes they're Asian, Filipino. I was, I was the voice of Philippine Airlines for six years in San Francisco. They thought I was Filipina. I never said I wasn't. <laughs> they didn't ask. They just wanted somebody who could do this very gentle, slight accent, and the Filipino. Uh, executive said, yeah, that's it. That's the girl. I think she went to some private school in Makati. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, but on that show, the, the writer was Filipino. And he called and he said, can you do a Filipino accent? And I went, hell yeah. I can't wait. But, you know, he's there. Josh Chan, who is Filipino also. They're there to like, you know, yell at me if I'm bad. If I do something wrong, so I we really try to be authentic, especially when I'm playing, you know, specific cultural characters. But I just want to be real, and you know, we all know that basically, on in many respects, we are all the same. We're just humans. <laughs> so that's all layered on. So, what was your favorite series? Well, I have to say All American Girl because they really let me. Once the show started going, everybody else was having issues. <laughs> and, you know, they were always w- telling Margaret to do this or that yeah, or yeah. change or whatever. Yeah. All the people wanted more uh, a screen time or whatever. So they just left me alone. Sometimes they just let me ad lib. They go, OK, here, here's uh, the remote do something fun. We're going to go work on this other thing over here. <laughs> so it was really fun. Was that the first time that you had worked with a completely Asian cast? Because I, except for one character that was 
that was, well, it was all Asian except for her friends were white. Yeah. Big giant Judy Gold. Yeah, Judy Gold was. And yeah. Maddie Corman, yeah. who've both gone on to yeah. wonderful right. work. Right. Uh, and Ashley. Ashley, she's on some other show now. Bright something. Whatever. Um, yeah, it was the first time an all Asian cast. And I knew because I'm really like. I've always been sort of in the community. I knew that there was going to be a lot of backlash because, you know, you don't have anything for a long time and then they put this out. Everybody's going to say, that, oh, that's not the show. That's not my family. This is not how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it all Korean? Well, you knew there was going to be issues. And it's always like, you know, five people who are really angry, really loud. Mm -hmm. And then that scares the executives. Yeah. Right. Where the rest of the community, and then regular people were like, "Oh, you know, that's so wonderful." You, you know, African Americans are coming up and saying, "You're just like my grandma." You know, Jewish <laughs> ladies would say, "You're just like my grandma," and I'd be like, "Okay." Did you get a lot of kickback from the network? Did they, uh, did they um, uh, put a lot of pressure on on on, on, the, on the the show to con kind of conform to what they wanted? Or? Well, you know, I really wasn't part of any of those things. I know uh, Margaret talks about it, but I, you know, I, my nature too is probably, uh, you know, if it doesn't concern me, I just don't, I'm wow. oblivious. I was at the same time writing on uh, a PBS children's show. Oh. So I was in my trailer writing for a lovely, multi, uh, a very diverse children's show called Puzzle Place, which was... Uh, I was writing the Asian American girl. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. so. Which came from being in theater, uh -huh. writing my solo shows. So did you see you started in comedy, correct? I started no in theater, Asian oh, you American in theater. theater. I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I studied at ACT. I went to the Asian American Theater Company, and you know at that time we were brand new, so. Yeah. None of us knew really what we were doing. Uh -huh. So I'd be taking classes at ACT and running back to the theater and teaching those same things <laughs> to people that I just learned that day at night. And I was directing and we were writing and it was such a great time because it didn't matter if you were good or bad or <laughs> if you knew what you were doing. You know, it was very, right. but it was very exciting. Right. We had a space. Right. <laughs> we were writing our own shows. Very exciting time. But it was also the height of uh, sketch comedy and improv. So that felt like a really good place to be. But the people I studied with were also um, old school. Um, so it was really more character based, situational based, not making comedy. Comedy came from the characters. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if stand-ups came in, the teacher would be like, yeah, if you, if you want to make a joke, go somewhere else. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, so it was really great. Sure, sure. Uh, did did, did um, um, Second City and those places Yes. kind of develop out of that? Well, Second City had, was Chicago. Well, it was Chicago. Originally. San Francisco, I think there were people that came from Pitchell Players, which I, I never mm. really knew, but it was out of that... Uh, St. Paul, mm -hmm. I'm old, I can't remember names, but he's like the guy who started Second City. Pitchell Players was another group oh, of okay. people that started in San Francisco and they were more politically oriented. Because there were several uh, Asian uh, um, actors and actresses that came out of Second City. Yeah! yeah. I'm I know. Susie Nakamura. Is really Susie Nakamura, she's younger than me. So she's younger than you. I yeah. met all of those Asian yeah. American you know who was in Second City like a million years ago was Victor Wong. Oh, that's right. right. Victor Wong from Big <laughs> Trouble in Little China. Yeah. He was like crazy. I loved him so much. I directed him in a play in San Francisco. And I remember because he was stoned all the time. <laughs> too. So I literally would go to his house in the Mission District and say, are you coming to rehearsal? <laughs> Are you awake? He'd call me at two o'clock in the morning and talk about his character. He was just nuts. But he was brilliant. Yeah. Just 
brilliant. Oh. And he had had a mini stroke or something, so one side of his face was fallen a little. <laughs> Bell's palsy, I'm not sure what it was. But that always added to his character, this kind of lived-in face. And the first movie I did was with um, Wayne Wang, mm -hmm. uh, who, it was called Dim Sum. And uh, Wayne, nobody got paid. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody got paid, and we were living, we were in the worst, and it was not under, it was like not under SAG. Yeah. <laughs> so we also were treated badly. Uh, not badly, but just not under a SAG contract, so our conditions were pretty difficult. Um, but Wayne was, you know, giving me direction by saying, don't think. <laughs> and I remember going, <laughs> how do you clean your brain? And so I was having a lot of difficulty with him because he really didn't know how to speak to actors mm -hmm. at all. And Victor took me aside and he said, okay, just say yes to whatever he says and then do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always carried that kind of what, in my heart. Kind of what actors say about all directors. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, many times, because actors are really people pleasers. Yeah, they try really true, hard. True. And I've had that in theater more than f television or film yeah. but you know you're just trying you're jumping through hoops and by the time you you've jumped through that 5,000th hoop you have no idea who your character is anymore because mm -hmm. you're just so lost you're on such shaky ground so um, yeah if you are acting <laughs> really trust your own instincts I mean listen to the director, because oftentimes they do have the key to what is going to unlock whatever issue you have, because sometimes, I mean, or many times I've been like, I don't know what I'm doing, and you're just trying all these things, and they'll say, you know, one word, and you go, oh, and then it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So always be open to listen, but, you know, if it doesn't work, toss it. But I've never had that problem with you. <laughs> You're so nice. Just, <laughs> you haven't talked to other actors, obviously. <laughs> Nobody's ever complained about you. Uh, um, so, uh, do you do you find that that you get that uh, you, you can get driven out of a performance by by a director? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, many times. I've not many times, but a few times. I felt like you know I came in sort of having uh, an idea, uh -huh. especially if it's a character that is something close to me. You know, if it's culturally specific, and I know uh -huh. who this person is, and I'm ready to do it, and they'll just say, you know, I think you need to do this, or, and I just can't figure out how to make it work. And I try because you know, at the end of the day, I know that. To a certain extent, I'm just a hired for hand person that they're, you know, especially if I'm a guest star, you know, there's a purpose for me in that show that maybe I don't know. <laughs> so I will listen and try to change it, but sometimes it just nullifies everything and I feel like I come out neutral, which is really a horrible feeling as an actor to feel yeah, as though you've yeah, walked away and yeah, sure. you've done nothing. But maybe somebody sees something, but you just go, oh. So I don't normally watch, I usually don't watch anything I've done. Even if it's something that I feel good about. Because <laughs> in the beginning I would watch and I'd, like I remember the first time I saw Dim Sum and uh, I just thought, God, I can't stop blinking my eyes. What the hell's wrong with me? I should have put eye drops in. You know, I don't even notice anything else. All I'm doing is, what's wrong? Why am I blinking so much? Why didn't somebody say stop blinking? <laughs> anyway, so it's stupid. I can't watch. I have to just under know my own, uh, have my own sense of, of what I've done is good or not. No, it's funny. I've, I've talked to uh, a number of actors who said that they they just can't watch themselves. They just don't. They, they don't like to watch themselves. No. They don't. They don't see the movies that they've done. No. Yeah. Or you'll watch the movie and then go, 
la la la. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, you're coming yeah. on. Right, right, right. right. Uh, yeah. That's why theater's so great, because you just, you think you're somebody, you feel somebody else when you're on stage. And there's nothing to tell you otherwise. Yeah, can you speak a little <laughs> bit to that? The, 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 the biggest difference for an, from an actor standpoint between theater and, and, and doing movies? Well, the biggest thing is you have four weeks of rehearsal. Mm. So, I mean, if I did a movie and we had even a couple of weeks of rehearsal, it's a lot. It would shift everything, yeah. I feel. Because then you get a sense of who the people are you're with. Mm -hmm. You get a sense of what the world you're in is. Because oftentimes, you know, I got called like a couple days before Spider-Man. And because Marvel is so NDA, I didn't even have a script. They just said, we just need you for a day. <laughs> you're going to be a moderator. It was a long day. <laughs> and when I got to the set, they gave me the script. I had to sign an agreement that I wouldn't, like, take a picture of it or something. They didn't give me a script. They gave me two pages, mm -hmm. three pages, whatever it was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of sides. And then when I left, I had to turn it back in. Really? Yeah. Well, it, and I didn't even really say anything that was on there because it was we were improvising. <laughs> So, it was ridiculous. Um, yeah, so rehearsal. Uh, and then during that time of rehearsal, you're doing a lot of like homework, figuring, you know, maybe you're, uh, I remember at Berkeley Rep, I was playing somebody, a, an artist at the turn of the century. And she uh, was a, in this time where female artists, well, probably even now, I realized I studied fine art at the University of Washington. Every single professor was an, a man. Hmm. So nothing's really changed. <laughs> Maybe now, but that world, it was very difficult to have any kind of uh, acceptance as a, a female artist. So my character was that character who was fighting the norm. And so I watched a bunch of films, and I watched one movie about uh, the, uh, oh, my brain, Camille Claudel, who was uh, Rodin's mistress or uh, something. Anyway, but she actually, I think maybe she died, I'm making stuff up now. But anyway, I watched this movie, I remember in Los Angeles several years before, and I, I thought, oh, that's a good movie. When I was watching the movie during this rehearsal, I was sobbing because I suddenly had a different perspective mm -hmm. of this artist who struggled so hard to, um, you know, be recognized as brilliant as she was. And I think that's still something that exists for women in the arts or in anything. You just have to work that much harder to get recognition or be able to do what you do. So anyway, the question was, <laughs> the difference is just the amount of preparation and work and uh, you see how everything changes too during that four weeks of rehearsal. You start here thinking one thing and then you go all the way to opening night and you think, I wish I had a couple more weeks, but you don't. But during the course of um, playing it too, it sort of evolves. The life of the person, the character you're playing on stage evolves. But it's nothing uh, thought out, it's something that sort of intuits out mm -hmm. from all the research you've done. Mm -hmm. And in film, I have to do all that work outside of the film, and if I'm lucky, I get to uh, maybe rehearse the scene once before you do it. <laughs> so you just have to trust. The, uh, film and television is really not the actor's medium, it's really the director's medium. So you yeah, have to sure. trust. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, when you're doing episodic television, you're basically shooting a film in eight days. So you even get less rehearsal. Yep. And sometimes no rehearsal. Particularly, uh, particularly now, yeah. where, where when, when I started, when I did All in the Family, we, we used to rehearse three full days. 
And, and <laughs> those that my favorite sitcoms. Yeah. Multi camera sitcoms. Eight hours a day, and so you you could really work out yeah. the, the nuances in a scene. And today, I you know I, I'd worked you know ten twelve years ago. I, I worked on sitcoms where the rehearsal would be three hours. We rehearse three hours and then they want to run through. Yeah. We do a run through and then and then they, they make adjustments on the run through and they rewrite the run through even though we haven't worked out the scene yet. Right. Oh, it's horrible. So, it's it's the way it is. <laughs> Especially if it's comedy, because you know you f I can find comedy. Yeah. I feel like I can find yeah. it. Yep. If they just give me some time, because <laughs> sometimes it's in not in the writing necessarily. No. So anyway, whatever. No. <laughs> I just, you know, now, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm happy. I love Magnum. And I think outside of our show, we've built a real camaraderie. So we feel really comfortable with uh -huh. each other. So even though we don't get a rehearsal, I feel really safe. So, uh, so that's a huge thing. If you're a guest star, oftentimes you don't, have that even you don't know anybody you're just like please play with me you just hope that people are going to be nice um yep. it's difficult yeah no it's difficult. 